Thanks, Haley. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for hanging out with me on your Thursday night. Um, I'm Sydney, and uh, so I have a about a 20 minute pre recorded video. I'll share it, and then afterwards, we'll have lots of time to um, answer questions and talk about it. And I have a couple of activities for us to practice um, what I shared with you. So let me just bear with me. I will share my screen. Okay. Um, sorry, I forgot to share my sound. Okay, this should work. Canadian Sport Institute of Ontario, and I'm going to take you through the second module called Fueling and Digestion. So in this second module, we're going to start off by reviewing our balanced meals. And we would have talked about this in our first module, so this will be a review, but we're going to build off of what we learned in that first one. Then we're going to talk about our fueling needs and especially what this might look like for you as a canoe kayak athlete. Third, we're going to talk about digestion rates. And I'll give you a little bit more information around the different rates of digestion so that you have more of an informed decision when it comes to fueling. And then last, we're going to do a application example to show you how to put this all together. So let's jump right in. So hopefully this or these pyramids look familiar to you. This is our sport nutrition pyramid. And um, again, here we want to focus on building up our diet so that the majority of what we're eating is comprised of our whole foods or um, balanced diet would be another term we can use here. So whole foods or a balanced diet. We want to make that our foundation instead of some of those sports foods or supplements. So we really want to focus on the pyramid on the right there. This is, our, this is our main focus, and we want to make sure that we're working our way up that pyramid. So we're going up, starting with that strong, balanced diet, that strong whole foods foundation, um, and then working on our sport nutrition and then maybe adding in supplements at the end. But we really want to make sure we're focusing on that balanced diet first. Because if you compare that to the one, the pyramid on the left, if we, we don't want to start that pyramid with a... A weak foundation where it's really small and we're working our way up and we also don't want to start at the top and work our way down we want to we start, want to start in the green there where that balanced diet is our focus and then working our way up and today we're going to try we're going to tie in the a bit of the sport nutrition piece here so we're going to go beyond you know what to eat for breakfast lunch and dinner and we're going to add in you know what what to eat in between when to eat your meals, and what do you do when you don't have time to eat. So we'll talk about all of that, but I just want you to remember that we're focusing on that right pyramid where we have the balanced diet first and we're working our way up. So what does this mean then in terms of our plate? So as a review, we talked about our balanced meals in the first module, and this plate would represent a light or a tapered training day and we would still want to include a good balance of all of our wholesome foods so this would include our grains and our starches our meats and alternatives and then our vegetables and our fruit and as we move through and increase our intensity or increase our training we need to account for the increase in exercise with our carbohydrates so that would mean as our training days get a little bit heavier, or we, we move into more moderate training, we want to increase the portion of our plate with our grains and starches to about a third. We're still including our protein there. And we want to reduce the vegetables just a little bit to make room for our grains and starches. And then as we move into more of a heavy training day, again, as we increase, we want to account for that with more carbohydrates. So we're going to add a little bit more greens and starches to make about half of our plate, taper back the vegetables a little bit to make room, but we're still including those. 
along with our protein. So as you can see, the grains and starches group gets a little bit larger as our training increases. Vegetables go down a little bit, but they are still there. And then we also always include our protein-rich foods, our meats and alternatives, a quarter of the plate. And of course, you can, you can always eat a little bit more. Some athletes say, you know, I'm still really hungry. Um, and so certainly you can have maybe a second plate or a larger portion, um, but we, we definitely don't want to leave out those vegetables. We want to include at least a quarter of a plate there on those heavy training days. And as a reminder too, we want to be thinking about adding in a little bit of those healthy fats into each meal, adding in some flavor, so some spices or herbs, so that it helps increase your enjoyment of those meals. And then last but not least, we always want to include some fluids uh, like water with each of our meals. So now what does this look like in terms of our training? So tying in now um, more of the sport nutrition component and not just eating balanced meals. So what does this look like as an athlete and how do we tie this into our sport and our training, um, especially as a canoe kayak athlete? So let's go through this example together and let's let's say that you have maybe an early morning paddle uh, on the water and then you also have a lift in the evening after school or work and let's let's now talk about what this might look like um, as an example day and, and how to fuel yourself for this type of training day this example I wanted to talk about a really important piece here um, around under fueling and over recovery so what happens often when we're training a lot is athletes don't adjust their carbohydrate intake to match the level of activity they're doing or the increased energy expenditure and they can become under fueled and this means that you don't have enough fuel or energy to match the amount of activity that you're doing and when someone's under fueled, you typically don't feel very good. And what happens is often an athlete will try to make up for it during the recovery period, which is a good thing. It's great that you're trying to make up for it. But what happens is we end up over refueling. Or we have over recovery. And by the end of the day, you may not be able to have enough energy or stamina um, or fuel to get through that last session, that last strength session in the evening. Um, so what this could look like is, as an example, if we have, we skip breakfast, we don't have anything in our stomach before we hit the water, we go, we do our training session, and then we might have a granola bar afterwards, and then we'll have a sandwich around lunch. We'll go to our SNC session in the afternoon. And then we'll get home. We'll be really hungry, so we'll have a big dinner. And then in the evening, maybe we'll get kind of snacky and have some junk food. And what this might look like in terms of our energy level is something a little bit like this. It's a bit of a roller coaster ride. So this isn't ideal because now our, our energy levels are kind of all over the place. So they might be really low before our paddle because we don't have anything in our stomach. They might increase quickly with that bit of a granola bar, but not too much and it won't last very long because that granola bar isn't too substantial. There's really not a lot of carbohydrates in there. Then we'll get another little peak as we eat our sandwich, but that won't last very long, especially going into our strength session. And then we'll get a really big rise in our energy with that big dinner. And then another big rise with the junk food in the evening. And so what we're doing here is we're just playing catch up. We're over recovering after our sessions and it's, we're not going to get the energy that we need for our training. As you see here, we get most of our bursts of energy after our sessions, after our paddle, after our strength session, when really we want our energy during, during our paddle, during our strength session. So this is really important to think about. When we under fuel, we often over recover and we get into this cycle where we're getting that energy after. We're over recovering after our sessions when we really want 
to recover when we need to and fuel beforehand so that we're getting that energy that we need during our session. So how do we avoid this cycle of underfueling and over recovery? What can we do to help avoid this? Well, we want to take some time to plan our sport nutrition, plan our meals and our snacks so that we've got that solid energy level throughout the day. And using the foundations that we've already learned about, we need to be at minimum eating our three balanced meals, our balanced plates throughout the day. But we might need to be adding in maybe two, three snacks in between our meals just to keep our energy levels up. And um, this is, in a perfect world, what we're aiming for. But we all know that this just, some days, most days, it won't happen. You know, maybe you're having to get out on the water early, early morning to avoid the heat and you just can't eat breakfast at 7 a.m. Or maybe you've got a cross-training session in the afternoon around 3 o'clock and you can't snack at that time. Um, And that's okay. And this is where we tie in that sport nutrition piece. And we learn how to have our balanced meals and our snacks at times throughout the day that are going to work for us and our training schedule. And we're going to talk about the different digestion rates of foods. And I'll show you how to incorporate this into your own training schedule. So let's talk about digestion and really food, when we eat food, we chew it, we start to break it down in our mouth, then it moves down to our stomach and then into our intestines and it's broken down into smaller molecules of sugar. And this is carried to various organs throughout our body, um, which is really important for our sport performance. So we've got energy going to our muscles, our lungs, our heart. Um, and it's important to know that different foods will take different lengths of time to go through this process. So we really must consider the different digestion rates of foods when we're thinking about how to make our nutrition plan and our nutrition schedule work with our training. Here are the different digestion rates of our different macronutrients. So at the top there are carbohydrate foods. So think back to what we talked about in the last module, we looked at the different foods that contain carbohydrates. And these foods would take about two hours or less to digest in our body. So they are the quickest option. And then moving up from that, well, I suppose down from that, we've got our protein there. That takes a little bit longer. Proteins take about two to five hours to digest. And then lastly, our fats they take the longest, around four to nine hours to digest in our body. So a really easy way to help you figure out what you're going to eat when is using the three, two, one rule. And all this means is if you have three hours, two hours, or one hour before training, it's a quick rule of thumb to help you remember what what kind of foods you can choose, depending on how much time you have before training. So thinking about if we only have three hours before our next training session, we want to have a meal that's going to have a combination of protein foods, carbohydrate foods, and a little bit of fat. This food might include a little bit of fiber as well, maybe from some fruit or vegetables or some starchy carbohydrates. But the reason why we want to include the protein carbs with a little bit of fat is because we have three hours for these foods to digest. And remember that fat does take the longest, so we want to include just a small portion to make sure that you have enough time to digest that and it doesn't sit too heavy in your stomach. So three hours out, it may look like a more of our balanced meal. Keep in mind too, if you have more than three hours, like let's say you have four hours before your next session, you might be able to get away with a larger portion of fat. Now, if you have only about two hours before, we'd wanna focus on a snack that has mostly carbs, but we can include a little bit of protein here. Remember that protein takes at least two hours to digest, so we can include a little bit of it. And it's actually really important too, because this is what's gonna help make you feel satisfied and not get too too hungry before your training session. So we can include a little bit of protein 
but our emphasis here is more so on our carbs. So an example of this would be maybe some crackers with a little bit of hummus. And remember too that this doesn't mean that you have to eat at the three hour mark, at the two hour mark, and at the one hour mark. It's more of an and or situation where you can eat um, at one time or the other, depending on how much time you have left. So you don't have to eat at each of these times. And if you have only one hour before your next session, we really want to focus and make our snack purely carbs. And that's because these foods will digest the quickest, so they won't sit too heavy on your stomach. It might be something light that will give you energy before you hit the water. So an example of this would be maybe fruit, applesauce, or maybe a, a granola bar with some chocolate chips in it or something like that. And also to keep in mind that every athlete is different and some may be able to tolerate a larger meal closer to, maybe closer to the two hour mark and others may not. So keep in mind your own tolerance and the foods that you like and maybe experiment with, the, with this timing or this three, two, one rule during the off season so that you can get to know your body best. So here are some more examples of things that you can have using the three, two, one rule before training. So three to four hours before, these examples reflect more of our mixed balance meals. Two hours before, we're prioritizing our carbs, but still including some protein. And then one hour before, we're really focusing on those carbohydrate rich foods. And one thing to note as well, is that these carbohydrate rich foods can also be used as energy during exercise. And that's because these are our quick options. So they're gonna digest really quickly and give us the energy that we need to get through a longer training session. We don't wanna to include too much here, but we can, we can include some. We just wanna be mindful that we're not having foods that are high in fiber, protein, or fat because we don't have time to digest those while we're exercising. So limiting those and focusing on those carbohydrate-rich foods will be great for that quick energy we need during exercise. All right, so let's put this all together now. So let's use the example that we looked at at the beginning of this module where we have two training sessions in a day. And here we now, we want to build up our knowledge. So we want to use what we know about are the importance of that strong nutrition foundation. So having those balanced meals and balanced snacks throughout the day. And we also wanna make sure that these are well spaced and we wanna make sure that they are spaced in a way that they're gonna give you the fuel you need to get through your training sessions as well as help you recover. And to tie that all together, we'll now add in the knowledge that we know about our di different digestion rates for our foods using that three, two, one rule. So starting off with carbohydrates, again, these are gonna be important for giving us the fuel that we need going into training. So we might space them out looking something like this. So first of all, we don't wanna skip breakfast. We wanna make sure that we're having something before we hit the water in the morning. If it is an earlier morning session, then just getting some of those lighter, quicker carbs in would be better than nothing. But we want to make sure we're trying to prioritize getting some carbohydrates in before this session, as well as having some afterwards to recover. We might add in some more carbohydrates in the middle of the day. And then we'd also add some maybe before our next training session to help us get ready for that next training session. And then we'd want to add in some carbs maybe afterwards and then some later on in the evening. Again, to really help with our recovery and getting us ready for the next day. And then protein. So this is how I would space it out throughout the day. So I'll walk you through it. So we'd wanna have a little bit of protein before that first session, but not too much because remember with protein, it does take about two hours to digest. So we'd wanna have a really small portion and we don't wanna to have too much so that you're having to wake up really early in the morning in order to digest that protein. 
uh, because sleep is really important and we want to make sure that we're also prioritizing some good sleep. So uh, we can include something small for breakfast, maybe a small amount of protein so that we do have enough time for it to digest before we hit the water in the morning. And then we'd want to include some more protein afterwards. Again, this is going to help with our muscle recovery. We'd want to include some again later in the afternoon, maybe for lunch. And then as we get closer to our next session, we might want to include just a little beforehand. Nothing during. Again, we don't have any time to digest that protein, but we'd want to include some for recovery for our muscle afterwards. So this is how I would space out our carbs and our protein for this training day. And then I would take it a step further and I'd make three, these meals our mixed or our balanced meals just to make things a little bit more practical. And I have them spaced out so that we have enough time for those foods to, di foods to digest before our next training session. So remember that these balanced meals should include some of our protein foods, some foods with some vegetables, maybe some fiber rich foods, some whole grains, as well as some, a little bit of fat. And so all of these foods in combination, they're gonna take a little bit longer to digest. So we need to make sure that they're placed in a larger gap so we have that time. So this might mean that our main breakfast actually will happen after our paddle in the morning. So this isn't to say that we should skip our breakfast. We definitely should have something beforehand, but we just might eat our larger meal after training and have more of that one to two hour balanced snack prior to hitting the water. So if we aim for something like this, focusing on some of those smaller balanced snacks before and after our training, and including those snacks right there, uh, that will help to fuel us before our session. And we're also keeping in mind those digestion rates by including just a little bit of protein. And because of this, we are gonna get a really nice balanced energy level throughout the day. So the important thing here is because we're including those snacks, the recovery snacks and those balanced meals and we're timing it in a way that works around our schedule, we are going to get the energy that we need before training and, and we're gonna get the energy while we're training. We're also gonna get those recovery nutrients in after our sessions. And this is the opposite to what we saw earlier. So we're no longer under fueling and over recovering. Instead, we're getting that op optimized nutrition for performance. We're planning ahead and we're using our knowledge of those digestion rates to properly time our intake so that we're going into our training sessions well fueled and feeling our best. So to wrap this module up, Let's go over some of the key points or the main takeaways. So one, carbohydrate is our quick fuel. So thinking that when we need a quick energy source, we think of our carbohydrates. Proteins will take a little bit longer to digest. So just thinking ahead a little bit in advance and making sure that we do have a little bit of time to digest foods that contain protein. Now fat and fiber take even longer to digest. And although fat and fiber foods are quite nutritious for us, remember they make up part of that good sport nutrition foundation, we just need to keep in mind that because they take even longer to digest, we need to space them out a little bit more in advance and outside of our training. And then lastly, again, we need to plan our meals and our snacks, knowing what we know now about digestion rates, using that three, two, one rule to help you create an optimal and a balanced nutrition plan. So that is it for this fueling and digestion module. All right. Just switching over to my other activity. Give me one moment.
All right, so uh, you've heard me speak for a while now. So um, let's work together to build up a fueling plan. So feel free to unmute as we go or, or type in the chat. Um, so working off of what we learned uh, just now, I wanted to work together to build up a, a sample fueling plan. Um, so this plan here, this day, we've got two sessions. So we've got uh, one in the morning and then one in the early afternoon. Um, the, 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 this athlete is going to plan to eat breakfast around 8 a.m. Um, there's a break planned in between the two sessions and then they're done for the day at three. So uh, the middle column here would be the nutrients that we're looking for at each of the key times. So at our breakfast, at our break, and for our recovery. And then the food section is where we'll brainstorm some, some meal or snack ideas together. So we'll start here looking at the nutrient section. So does anyone remember what nutrients we're looking for um, for our breakfast? So this would be more of our um, balance plate because we've got about three hours um, to eat or to uh, let that food digest before our morning session? Um, protein, fat, and carbs. Yes, exactly. Yep. So I just wrote down, yeah, we've got some carbohydrates, we've got some proteins, uh, fats, and then the fibers. Awesome. Um, so what kind of foods would we want to have at breakfast then that would contain those, those nutrients? What do, you, what do you guys like to have for breakfasts? We have oatmeal in the chat. Oh, thank you. I can't see the chat. So thanks, Haley. <laughs> oh, a French toast. Okay, awesome. So we got some good carbs there. We got bread, a um, little bit of egg if you're doing the French toast. Awesome. Eggs. Eggs. Blueberry smoothie. Ooh, blueberry smoothie. Wonderful. And we can even combine all those things too, like combine some of the eggs, um, have like a hard boiled egg with the oatmeal. So we've got a little bit more protein. So my idea was uh, to make an omelet, uh, maybe toss in some tomato spinach to get some vegetables um, and then combine that maybe having some toast on the side with a little bit of jam, a little bit of peanut butter as well. You could have uh, like um, yogurt, oats, and fruits, like if you want, like granola. Yeah. Like, that's what that's uh, like this. Yeah, that's an easy one. In the morning, I usually make myself eggs with a lot of veggies and uh, like just a bit of toast. That's it. Yeah, perfect. So it's important too that you're picking foods that you like as well, right? Because you're going to have more enjoyment out of it. Yeah, those sounds like all those ideas are great. Um, they sound balanced. We've got our, all of our um, key nutrients there. And we've got three hours to let those foods digest too, so that they won't be sitting too heavy on your stomach before you go into that morning session, but you'll be energized enough. And then how about for our break? So notice our break's only 60 minutes. Um, so what, if we only have about an hour there, what would be some key nutrients that we'd want to focus on for a snack during that break? Any carbohydrates. Ideas? Carbs, yep. A little bit of protein. Yeah, you guys are crushing it. Yep. So mostly carbs, a little bit of protein. Again, to um, if you're someone who can, um, you know, having a little bit of protein doesn't upset your stomach within the hour. Um, like if you only have an hour of a break, um, then go for it. So what are some uh, snack ideas or things that you can have in between those sessions that would have mostly carbs, but a little bit of protein? Pita and hummus. Mm-hmm. Cornflower and celery. Yep, so those would be uh, really high in our fiber, the cauliflower, celery. Um, we could do um, like, a, what my idea was yogurt uh, with some fruit. The, the fruit would have um, a lot more carbohydrates than some of our vegetables would. Um, and if you did a flavored yogurt too, it'd have a little bit of extra um, added sugars for some extra carbohydrates. You could have a uh, granola bar with sunflower seeds. I know that sunflower seeds have a lot of uh, protein. They do. Yep, absolutely. If you like um, 
experimenting and baking too, you can make homemade energy balls. So you can put, you know, all your seeds in there, some oats, um, peanut butter, and you can roll them up and they're really portable too. So you can, you know, put them in your bag when you're, when you're traveling and you can pop them in as a, as an easy snack over your break. And then we have another afternoon session. And then after that, um, around three o'clock, that's the end of the training day. Um, so with, with the three o'clock time, um, we probably wouldn't be eating dinner anytime soon. So it's really important to get in a recovery snack afterwards um, because there's gonna be quite a bit of time until we can get home and, and eat our dinner. So um, for a recovery snack, does anyone remember what nutrients we're looking for for that one? Your carbs. Yeah, I heard uh, yogurt. So that would be a good source of our protein. I heard carbs. So mostly carbs, protein. You can put a little bit of fat in as well to help tide you over until dinner. So um, does anyone wanna share their recovery snack or recovery meal ideas with us? So that would, that would uh, hit these key nutrients. So my idea was uh, just keep it easy, a PB and J sandwich. And you can make it beforehand, uh, put it in a little baggie, take it with you. Um, and if you're traveling, if you have to drive to get home or um, there's going to be quite a bit of time till you get home, it's an easy, quick thing you can just uh, snack on on your way home. And of course, drinking lots of water. Oh, sorry, Haley. I was just going to say we got a fiber one bar and a protein bar in the chat as well. Okay, yep. So those bars, the granola bars, they're really portable. So those are good, uh, especially on really busy days, if you're traveling, uh, those are good to rely on. I buy uh, these like uh, cucumber sushi rolls with avocados in them. And uh, they're like not too big. They're like kind of like a snack that you just like get after like a workout or something. But they uh, they taste really good and I enjoy them. And they have um, everything that you kind of need there. Those sound super fancy. That's awesome. And do they have rice in them as well? Yeah, they also have rice. Yeah, so that'd be a great source of your carb. Awesome. And you're getting in a little bit of uh, cucumber too, a little bit of uh, um, green vegetables, which is great. Awesome. Okay. So let's do a little bit of a harder one. Uh, so this is a busier day. So we've got three sessions on this day. Uh, and we're having to get up a little bit earlier to eat breakfast because that first session is earlier in the morning. Um, so again, nutrients we're looking for for our breakfast. Um, now, because we only have two hours, we might not include that fat and that fiber just because they take a little bit longer. Um, so for this breakfast, if we're just looking at carbs and protein here, any ideas for good foods that we might wanna have for a breakfast this day? I don't like peanut butter, so I do like a bread, butter, and jam. Something sweet. So stuff on bread, butter, jam. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't be too too high in protein, but if you did, if you like a uh, whole wheat bread, it would have a little bit more protein. We have uh, cereal with banana from Richard, okay. and Owen said toast with peanut butter and banana. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Great work. So I was thinking, yeah, oatmeal, and you can cook it with milk um, to give it a little bit of protein, um, or you can do something like overnight oats where you soak the oats in milk um, overnight, and then you just wake it up, or you, you wake up, you heat it up in the morning, um, and then add your fruit. So it's a really quick, easy breakfast, and you've got um, your carbs with a little bit of protein. Those are great ideas. Thanks for sharing. Um, and then you'll see in our first session, it's two hours long. So it's a long one. Do you think we might need to eat something during that one? It kind of depends. 
Um, you might find with a two hour session, typically after around 90 minutes, we do need a little bit of um, food or carbohydrates in our system to help keep our blood sugars up, help keep our energy up. Um, if you find that you're not overly hungry, um, you might not necessarily need to eat during that session, but if you are, you certainly can. Um, does anyone remember what we, what nutrient um, we want to have while we're exercising? Just carbohydrate. Yeah, awesome job, Rachel. Just carbohydrate. That's our quick fuel. Um, so a good choice here would be, you know, juice, fruit, maybe some pretzels, um, something that you can snack on if if it makes sense um, with with what you're doing and. Um, and it's easy and portable too. And it's, it's mostly just carbs. So it'll digest pretty quickly and give you the energy that you need. And then we've got an hour long break. So what nutrients would be looking for at, uh, for that little recovery snack there for the hour? Uh, protein. Yeah, exactly. Some protein, mostly carbs again because we'll wanna get ready and recovered before our next session because we only have an hour. So something quick there would be a piece of fruit or a banana with any type of nut butter, uh, maybe a homemade muffin or an energy bite. And then we've got our second session. Uh, that's an hour long. But then the, we do have a break around one o'clock, which is about a three hour break. So what do you think would be good to have here? I would like a nice oily Greek salad, chicken. Greek salad, yeah. Hearty, if you add some chicken, maybe you can put some, I don't know, Stefan, if you like um, cooked um, rice or quinoa or sweet potato, you can toss that in the salad. That would give you some extra carbs. So you're on the right track. We're, we're wanting to have that, that mixed meal, that balanced meal, because we've got three hours. So something where we've got our, our carbs, our protein, maybe some fat if you're doing an olive oil dressing, um, and then some fiber. So my thoughts for, for here, um, you can just have some leftover pasta. If you have a meat sauce on it, um, you can have a salad on the side or do some raw veggies just chopped up and dip those in some hummus. And that would hit all of your nutrients there. And then going into your third session at four o'clock, that's an hour long. And then we're finishing the day around five. So if, um, if dinner, if you'll be having dinner shortly after, then you can go ahead and have that recovery meal. Um, but again, if you are maybe out of town or you're traveling and dinner isn't going to be for another couple of hours, it's really important that we get that recovery snack in right away. The quicker we can start recovering, uh, the better we're going to be for um, the next day. So um, that's why I have in brackets there or a snack if dinner is going to be later. Um, so again, here we're looking for that balanced meal if we're doing, if we're doing dinner. Um, and so my idea there was just doing some chicken, maybe mixed with some rice, lots of rice. Uh, this is a heavy training day, so we want about half of our plate filled with our carbs. Um, and then maybe doing some broccoli with some cheese on, on it. Um, to reach our vegetables for that dinner. Or if you're doing more of a recovery snack, having some of those carbs with protein, so maybe a bit of trail mix uh, with some fruit and maybe um, a portable chocolate milk uh, container just to get that in if you're on the road. So any, uh, any questions at all, open it up um, to everyone and I'll stop sharing so I can see the chat as well. Um, I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Um, what, what would you suggest? Uh, Cause I, I have my training sessions in, in the evening around seven and I finish work at, at five and I'm home by like six. So like to eat my dinner, I have to eat it before cause it's too late to eat it after. So how do you suggest that I get enough to eat at dinner but still have that time when I don't really have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's challenging when the it's so late in the evening. Um, what you can try doing is maybe splitting up your dinner into smaller portions and having a little bit before and then a little bit after. So it's not so much afterwards if it's too much you know, before you go to bed. Before, but I eat before, not, not early enough before that I have time to digest all that stuff. Mm. So maybe you can bring a snack with you on your way home or eat it just like when you're finishing up work or school. Um, so you've got something in your stomach uh, before you have your training in the evening. And when do I eat my dinner? Then you can have some dinner afterwards. It's too late to have it afterwards. Okay. Okay. What kind of uh, foods do you like for dinner? Like, um, tuna casserole, Indian food, um, Mm -hmm. So you can do those foods because those are great. Like you've got your, uh, your, your carbs, you're going to have some protein there. You can maybe try having a smaller portion of it um, so that it's not so much food before you go to bed. Okay. And then try having a little bit more before, um, maybe earlier, uh, just when you're finishing uh, finishing your day, heading home and having a, a bigger snack beforehand, just so you have a little bit more time to digest it before, um, before you go to your training. Um, okay. How do you know if you're eating enough? Okay. Um, so Jason, you mean just like at your meal or over the course of the day or for recovery? So a couple of things um, over the course of the day. So a couple of good ways to, to get a sense if you're eating enough is, um, you know, making sure or checking in with your hunger. Um, if you're finding yourself hungry in between meals or having a lot of cravings um, in between meals, then that could be a sign that we're maybe not fueling enough um, at meals or at snacks. Um, you might find that your energy levels are kind of low during your workouts or your training. Um, and you might find maybe your weight's changing as well. Um, so those are some, some ways to know if you're, if you're eating enough. And if you notice that you're, you're hungry or your energy levels are kind of low, just try adding a little bit more um, at your meals and your snacks. You're welcome. Yeah, so I'm just reading that question, Tegan or Abby. Um, yeah, so medications really make it challenging if it's changing up our, um, our hunger and our fullness. Um, so I think that what you're doing, um, like eating smaller meals uh, might be better. So rather than having large meals, um, if, you're, if that medication is making you feel um, or filling you, making you feel full, then try splitting it up into smaller, more frequent snacks. So maybe having, if it's, if it's possible with your day, maybe having smaller snacks, maybe every two hours rather than three or four. So that you're still getting that same amount of nutrition in. It's just split up a little bit evenly throughout the day. Um, and that might sit a little bit better in your stomach. You might not feel quite as full um, with, with that medication. That's challenging for sure. I actually have a follow-up question based off of that. Because the medications I take, um, I take in the morning and then in the afternoon. Um, and about 10 minutes after I take it, I no longer am hungry. So I always end up binge eating later into the afternoon, into the night time. And I know that sometimes eating too close to bedtime can make you not want to sleep then. So what would you do in that case? Yeah, so maybe try and having more liquid, um, maybe like a smoothie or something first thing. Um, sometimes having more of a, a smoothie based meal or something softer like an oatmeal or applesauce um, sits a little bit lighter if you're not feeling overly hungry. 
Um, that way you're getting something in your belly um, earlier on in the day, and that might help with some of the binging uh, and some of the hunger later on in the day. It's a good thing I've always loved eating mutton soup. Pardon me? I said it's a, hang on. Uh, oh, there you go. I said it's a good thing I've always enjoyed eating a lot of mutton soup then. <laughs> soup, yeah. But I mean, you could do stews, smoothies, soups. Like, you can make them taste really good, and they can be really balanced, too. So there's nothing wrong with that, especially this time of year, too. Keep you warm. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Tegan. We are uh, running up, <clears throat> running out of time here. We have to end things at 7.50. Uh, I'm happy to see all these questions come in. I should put my camera on, sorry. Um, so maybe we will do another nutrition session soon. Uh, for all of you guys going to the ski camp this weekend, remember if you're doing a ski that's longer than 90 minutes, maybe bring some energy balls in your pockets. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you, Sydney. Here, I'll, I'll take you off the spotlight as well. Um, and we're going, I'm going to post this recording. Someone was asking the chat if they, if some of their teammates couldn't attend tonight, if this will be posted somewhere, we're going to put it on our YouTube channel tomorrow. So you guys can find it there. Okay. Well, thank you. And maybe I'll see some of you this weekend uh, in Horseshoe.